Hey, hey, One Plus Armor fans, we're back for another battle report, and we are once again joined by Mr. Canhammer Chris. Today we're going to have my Corn Demon Kin and uh, Crimson Slaughter up against Chris's Deathwing. So I'll give you a quick run through of the army, so we'll talk about the mission, get our table set up, and dive straight in. So for my army, I'm running a combined arms attachment of the Corn Demonkin and allied Crimson Slaughter detachment. So with all that, I've got two Chaos Lords, both with Power Fist and Lightning Claw, Mark of Corn, Juggernauts, uh, the uh, KDK guy's got the Blood Forged armor, the Crimson Slaughter guy has the two up save with It Will Not Die. I've got two units of eight Flesh Hounds. Two units of seven cultists, uh, sorry, these ones over here, two units of seven cultists for the KDK detachment. One unit of ten cultists for the uh, Chaos Space Marines. I've got a Greater Brass Scorpion of Corn, and he's sitting in with a KDK based on some uh, Forge World FAQs and ITC and whatnot. And then we've got two Mauler Fiends with Lasher Tendrils on loan from the Iron Warriors, as you can see. So... Come back and take a look at Chris's army We are well. here with Chris's Deathwing. You want to walk us through your army here, Chris? Yeah, so I decided to go with the uh, formation, the Deathwing detachment that allows me to bring them all in on one of my turns. I just pick the turn in secret and the whole detachment terminators comes in. So I have um, three of my units, which are split up like this. They have an assault cannon and four storm bolters. Uh, give me some shooting power. Then I have one unit that's just like three lightning claws and two storm bolters. That's kind of my leftover terminators to flush out the list. Then I have my Death Star with Belial, so they don't scatter. Seven Thunder Hammer Storm Shields, one pair of lightning claws, and two assault cannons. And Belial has the two lightning claws, just for, uh, I don't know, maybe in case I, I might need to kill more models with them. You know, Thunder Hammer Storm Shields can get bogged down sometimes, which is kind of nice. And then because this detachment has to start off the board and can no longer come in turn one, and I didn't have any drop pods fully painted, and I wanted to bring as minimal unpainted models as possible. I brought two assassins, um, and they're the uh, Calexus assassins, so they're the anti slicer ones. But they're basically solely here for the um, ballistic skill one to your opponent to stay on the board so I don't get tabled turn one. All right, excellent. So we're gonna be playing Adepticon Primer mission number two. Effectively what it works out to is there's gonna be two scoring zones, one right about here, and another one right about here that are 24 inch circles, so pretty significant. Uh, we get points for being in each of those, holding them like normal objectives. And then there's also double kill points, so every unit is worth two kill points. So, should be a bloodbath. I'm a little worried about Chris's uh, metric ton of power fists in here, because it's going to rip through my, uh, my stuff that you know gets instant killed by strength eight for my dogs. Uh, Mauler fiends just sort of fall over in general. And then the Brass Scorpion as well. I mean, he does have Armor 14 on the front, so it's still 6s to glance in, but it's a lot of attacks, and those well. only Weapon Skill 3. Yeah, you know, but uh, the Deathwing are such a character-filled uh, character armies. They're so beautiful that I, I just love them. I just love the th like how, how theme it is to drop them all in and kill stuff, so it's going to be really exciting. Excellent. All right, we will be back after our deployment. Okay, we are here post-deployment. So, on my side, this is after scout moves, infiltrate everything. We've got a unit of dogs and the lord there. Big brass scorpion. Two Mauler fiends. Uh, another lord and a unit of dogs. All three of the cultist units are in reserves. And Chris, where are all your models? Oh, they're all in reserve, because they have to. I have no choice, and I have an assassin here. Assassin over there, hidden. So they can't so be the shot turn there. one, basically. Maybe he can... No, it doesn't look like I can get shot turn one at all. So and one there. And then I chose to go first for the sole reason of if I go second, like no matter what, I'm not gonna auto lose if I chose two to be my turn for my uh, death ring to come in. But if I went first, if I went second, sorry, he'd be able to kill my both my assassins. His dogs would move up, charge him, and then it'd kind of put me on the back foot. Whereas by me going first, unless Logan seizes. I can basically have my assassins alive when my whole army comes in and then they can help out and it also means that I should have more board control with more space to deep strike into. Yeah. So I'm, I chose to go first. Alright, so with that I am going to try to seize. Which was a tough choice, but yeah. Uh, is it going to be a 6 Chris? I don't care either way. Nick, am I going to seize? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Like. 
Nope, that's a four. All yeah, right. It, it was. It's not like. It, the way that I deployed is if you seized, it didn't ruin my day. No, not at all. I so. just say it puts you a little bit on the back foot. That's it. But you all have right. to play in that way, yeah. Good luck, buddy. Good luck. Be back at the end of probably just the end of turn one, because I'm pretty sure nothing's going to happen in Chris's turn one. <laughs> yeah, all right. I, I won't do much. We're here at the end of turn one. As expected, not really much happened. Uh, Chris's turn one, the assassin just put some pot shots into these guys, did a single wound to a single dog. Outside of that, uh, I just moved some guys to be in cover and to contest that objective regardless of the outcome here. Hide the rear armor on both of my Mauler Fiends. Hide the rear armor on my Brass Scorpion. Uh, put the dogs in some cover. Try to make it so that uh, there's basically not going to be any useful shooting from this guy. Uh, depending on the moves for cover roll, but not too much anyway, and definitely no charge. Uh, and also just to try to spread out a little bit with both of those units to deny any sort of close by uh, deep strikes. So. We'll see how it goes. Uh, with that, we're going to go into Chris's turn two, where I'm pretty sure he is going to deep strike. So we'll be back at the end of Dark Angel's turn. All right, here at the end of Deathwing two, Chris, what happened? Uh, basically, I came in, tried to group over in here, caused some damage. I put all my firepower into that one dog unit. I'll whittle them down throughout the game, hopefully. Um, that's it, really. I just kind of got my army deployed and ready to go. Yeah, so we lost a dog over here. I think two two over here and took and two a couple dogs. wounds. Yeah, I did a wound to the Lord. A couple dogs are wounded still, so that unit's starting to dwindle. Yep, they go down they go down pretty fast to bolter fire. <laughs> so, uh, one thing I just realized that I think you're forgetting, and maybe it doesn't come in on the Deathwing formation, but I'm pretty sure you get twin length attorney deep strike. Mm. It's in the armor rules. We'll check that out and we'll come back. It's a, too late I now unless we redo the whole thing. It, it is there, it's in a weird place though. Uh, anyway, we'll double check on that, we'll come back, and we'll figure out how we're going to handle that if it is indeed the case. Uh, but otherwise, we'll be back in... Okay, here, end of chaos, turn two. So... Actually, we, we have to start with the rules oh. thing that we ended the previous Yeah. Round. So we did, so when this book came out, I was actually really upset and depressed that my Deathwing lost the Twin Linked when they come in from Deep Strike. Because in the iPad version, it's nowhere in the unit entry or anywhere else. It's actually in the Terminator Armor War Gear section that says that they get twin link when they deep strike. It's really obscure and very poorly worded. So, I, like, I never knew. So I've been playing that wrong. I've only played like three or four games with this army in this edition, to be honest, anyway. But that's still kind of frustrating. Yeah, but it's really strange because it does not even special name for the Terminator armor, right? It's just Terminator armor. Yeah, so you never think in. to look for the yeah. special rules for it. So, like, I could even have, like, technically I could have a librarian with, like, a combi graph come yep. in and twin shoot link. that in his twin link, which is pretty yeah. awesome, right? Some good stuff. So that said, we redid that shooting phase and it actually worked out with me taking one fewer wound. Yep, but fewer wound. we did it right. So, uh, in the chaos turn, we had one unit of cultists come in and they just moved up over here. Forgot to run them, unfortunately. Uh, we had this unit sort of blob up, get out of line of sight of anything that can shoot at it from either side, sort of minimize the impact coming from this side. Brass Scorpion came over here, uh, just again, hiding his rear armor from anything that can shoot out with assault cannons. And Chris did make a mistake last turn, forgot to run these guys. I didn't even did. ask if I could do it, I just kept my mistake. Yeah, it was, it Which was, is appropriate. It was after, after shooting and everything was, yeah. Anyway. We're still in my shooting phase, but I played it right, yeah. that's okay. So, I uh, did a large blast, strength 10, AP2, ignores cover on that, and killed, I think, four or five guys? Three. Three? Yeah, oh, only. Anyway. No, sorry, four. Four, yeah. Yeah, because I didn't count below, it's 11. Maybe. So, work, worked out. Pretty well, but think about average after all the rolls, but it's nine wounds. Uh, we shot the tail gun from the scorpion into these guys, did nothing as expected. And then we got the hell away from these guys and charged two Mauler Fiends into these guys, whiffed magnificently, got two hits out of eight attacks. Uh, Mauler Fiends were good though, only got one hit back, passed their save. Mm -hmm. And we both did nothing. Yeah, we both did very little. I killed one guy. Uh, and then over here, did the Chaos Lord and dogs into the Assassin, hoping to just take him down under weight of attacks. Unfortunately, didn't quite work as planned. The Chaos Lord did die, of course, in the challenge with instant death and everything. Uh, failed my save against the one instant death attack that went through. So that's a dead Chaos Lord, not my Warlord, fortunately. Uh, and the dogs, uh, through weight of, weight of attacks, did manage to get some success. The Assassin has one single wound left. So with that, at the end of turn two, uh, the score is three points for Chaos to one point for Deathwing. So we'll be going into Deathwing turn three. 
You're at the end of Dark Angels 3, what happened Chris? Oh, I got us two Mauler Fiends, blew them up in combat. Assassin died, did one move to a dog, which is pretty good. This is still contested, but pretty soon to be cleaned up. My last unit that mishapped last turn came in that we forgot to mention. And then I've just been kind of spreading out here. Not sure what to do about that Scorpion. Can't go into combat with him and I can't get rear armor because it's his weakness. I'm never going to see it, so um, we'll just have to see, see what the next turn goes. All right, Chaos 3. Here at the end of Corn Demon King 3, uh, over here, the dogs did kill the two Terminators they charged into, which is good. Uh, so I got my kill point there. Other than that, it's consolidated, so I'm up to four on Blood Tithe from that. Uh, then over here for some shooting, uh, we dropped a pie plate on these guys, killed one, did some shooting into them, did nothing. Flamed over here uh, through some precarious angles that we checked, was able to get one, charged into there, took out the whole unit with stomps. Well, killed, killed two, stomped the rest off. Um, so we got another blood tie there, putting me up to five. And then over here, we had the dogs all charge into the Calexus. Um, not so hot dice on my side, did a single wound, took uh, no wounds on the dogs. I think I passed my save on that. Uh, and with that, our current score is six for chaos, uh, on the primary, anyway, not counting kill points. Uh, six on objectives for chaos to four on objectives for Deathwing. So with that, Deathwing turn four. And the Deathwing four, what happened, Chris? Pretty good. Assassin lived over there, which is really nice for me. Um, I tried to make the cultists over there panic. Couldn't do it. Or sorry, fail morale. Couldn't do it. Uh, I didn't get enough on my movement. And then over here I killed these dogs and moved in for cover to try and get this objective. Uh, so we'll have to see how next turn goes. But that assassin might actually... Well, no, because you're going to get the objective to cure probably out. Yeah. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. It's pretty far now, but for sure in two turns you'll have it. Yeah, probably this turn. Eh, maybe. We'll see. But uh, yeah, at some point. So with that, Chaos 4. Right here at the end of KDK 4, we've got some dead guys there from close combat, some stompiness. We've got some dead Terminators here from the Scorpion shooting and some really unlucky saves by Chris and some hot to hit rolls by me. Uh, over here, the Assassin has one wound left. Uh, move the Cultus up. I think they're about within 12. We'll have to measure it out. Um, it'll make a difference. This game is really close actually on scoring. Uh, the Lord came over here to try to join this combat and rolled Snake Eyes to get in, so nothing happened there. On this side, my cultists came in from ongoing reserves, just moved up to the very edge of this, and then ran. So they are contesting, or controlling that, um, it's what, for, for what it's worth anyway, because they are obsec. Uh, and then we've got the unit of dogs I brought in for my Blood Tithe points that are also within 12, so worst case, I'm contesting that. Uh, with that, we're going into Deathwing turn 5. Okay, we're doing a whole turn five recap, so there's not too much left going on. Uh, over here, in Chris's turn, the assassin died, Ugh. so I went and get four points on that one. And over here, my objective secured guys were within 12, and Chris's assault cannon whiffed horribly, so I got my two points there as well. Uh, so right now, Belial and the Terminators here are the only unit left uh, for the Deathwing. So score going into a possible turn six, is 14 for KDK to 8 for Deathwing. Chris, yeah. you want to see if we get another turn? I'd love to see that. It's not like, it's going to be a double loss. All right, we, we got a turn off. six coming up. Woo. All right, we are here at the end of the game. Uh, we didn't didn't add up the score on the, the primary, but suffice to say, uh, it's a KDK victory on that. Kill points was actually really close until this, where uh, through some fudge dice, we double checked where it, it was. Also, let's be fair; it was it was it was poor placement. Yeah. Like, so, like, had I been more invested at the end there, I should have theoretically not put my I should put my Thunderhammer Storm Shields in front, which is what I normally do with the Assault Cannon behind. Yeah. Played to the range, but I kind of just threw them forward, and so, then Belial got hit. With an Assault Cannon here, and then Belial here, and Strike Ten close combat attacks doubles him out because he doesn't have Eternal Warrior, which is fine. Like. Uh, you know, um, you, when you make mistakes like that, you should pay the price because then eventually you get better. Yeah. And I made a lot of mistakes this game. You know, that unit would have been bigger had I blah, blah, blah. So I made lots of mistakes. Yeah. But uh, really, until the last last well, two turns, close, yeah. it was really, really close. Like, Chris was in a good position to take it. And the last two turns, just things, things died. <laughs> I'd say our armies were fairly well balanced. KDK and Deathwing are on the same level. You think? 
Uh, KDK is a bit higher, but Deathwing's pretty good against like lower tier books. Yeah. I was going more for the uh, um, spamming two plus save and trying to get around the meta, where a lot of people are taking like ignore covers, lots of strength six. Like I would love to play an Eldar bike spam list with this and just I'd probably still get rocked, but just see what happens. Yeah, that would be take a long time to kill. You still have to deal with the fact it's one one wound units, but the two plus holds out for a long time, right? Yeah, yeah. Every every single Terminator negates wounds from, on average, I guess, what, like three bikes? So, it's pretty decent. Anyway, that's where we're at. Uh, we're doing Adepticon scenarios, as we said at the beginning of it. Uh, Chris and I are both going to be there, uh, both with the team event. I'll be on different teams, as well as the 40k champs. And Chris, you're also playing Age of Sigmar, I think? Uh, just on the Friday. Just on the Friday, okay. Yeah. So, uh, if you're going to be there, come find us. We'll be wearing Can Hammer or One Plus Armor t-shirts or something like that. Uh, otherwise, please do check out our YouTube channel, which you're probably on if you're watching this, uh, but also our Twitch channel. We do stream uh, currently every Wednesday. That may be changing, uh, but also check out our website, oneplusarmor.com, uh, where we will be having some new changes, some new announcements coming up soon. And Chris, you want to talk about the Can Hammer Team Tournament coming up? Yeah, I just want to say something first. Yeah. Press the red subscribe button to be, make it a gray subscribed duh button. There you go. No, Can't Ever Team Tournament just sold out as of today. If you're watching this video, it might be a bit later anyway, like closer to the event, but we have 12 teams now. We're fully booked, so if you're interested in a four-man ETC-style event in Ontario next year, we'll have to expand the venue, so... Cool. Let's check it out. Canhammerteamtournament.com, I think. .blogspot.com. I didn't pay for the URL. There you go. So canhammerteamtournament.blogspot.com. Past that, thanks for watching. As Chris said, you know, if you like what you see, feel free to subscribe. But otherwise, stay tuned for some more bad reps.